Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion on this gloriously rainy day out here at the Notch. We like to go way back to G&I, as you know. So my name is Kimberly Quinn, and today I'm inspired by Mel Robbins. I she I sort of was flipping through, and you know I'm up really early. I feel like I've slept in if it if it makes it to 6 a.m. It's just like like the day got by me, um, kind of thing. So anyway, I was up early. And listening to her, and she was talking about this thing about uh, fear and excitement. And it's actually some work I've done also, just labeled it differently. And because the episode also, I think I wrote a Psychology Today article on it. Anyway, it's about uh, developing a positive stress mindset, which is how I labeled it. But it really, we're talking about the same thing. Because Mel was talking about, yeah, it's both season. We got smart about it. Put on a, a little, uh, mind, uh, it says mindfulness goat, which could be a little confusing for anybody who reads it but anyway it keeps them safe and during bow hunting season okay so and mel was talking about fear and excitement and how they're the same feel viscerally speaking the body wise body wise it doesn't know the difference between fear and excitement it's the only difference is how the brain labels it right because the brain in its in its repertoire memory bank of when it's when it knows it's afraid of something and when we know that we're excited about something there are different memories attached to those things but the feeling in the body is actually the same so mel of course is spot on with that and 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 when i did my whole thing on the positive stress mindset it was about changing your words because the feeling's the same so let's say my classic example is if if uh let's say a student has a presentation or a grown seasoned grown-up has a presentation out in the professional world and they've put all kinds of effort in and everything else and then it's getting closer and closer and, and, and they're starting to feel, uh, you know, afraid, nervous and afraid, like anxious, afraid. And, you know, all then all the what if starts, all the what if dialogue starts with what if I lose my words? What if one of my teammates doesn't show up? What if they get, you know, sick and can't make it and they're a key part of the whole thing? And if it's a student, will I be graded the same? If it's a professional thing, will it come off as well and be as impressive? What if we put in all this work? Uh, it, you know, what if it doesn't, what if we give it our best and it doesn't go well and somebody else steals a show and gets the promotion or whatever and all that stuff starts. So rather than get into all the fear-based what if thinking and catastrophizing, you know, about losing your notes or whatever, worst case scenario stuff, instead of that, changing the words, it may sound so silly that it can be that this simple, but it is. And remember with my Minecrafters, I do. Is it that simple? Yes. Is it that easy? Not necessarily. It is this simple. So since the brain, it's really what we're telling the brain. So as far as the heart racing and all the limbic system stuff and, and, uh, you know, the cortisol being released to the, you know, all the stress, horm the stress hormones and everything that also happens when an Olympic athlete, uh, is waiting to, for the gun to go off so she can, you know, start running the race of her life. That's all, it's all the same stuff with the heart rates and the blood and all that stuff so blood pumping and so when we tell ourselves before the presentation rather than i'm really nervous about this i'm really anxious anxious about this i'm really stressed about this god i'm so afraid this might happen that might happen i'm so afraid this might happen or that might happen instead of that when we say i have worked so hard on this i am so excited to deliver this presentation and remember that as smart as we are okay the brain is tricked rather easily thankfully for in some ways anyway so i'm so excited when we change the words it changes how the brain labels it which then changes how we re how how we respond because remember thoughts first feeling second so when we start to to kind of trick the brain into realizing that it's excited again same body response it changes the whole outlook you just keep saying it over and over. I'm so excited. Even if it's ex even if you're excited about the presentation, you're excited to do it and show 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 your stuff, all all the work you did. It might be that you're excited to have it be over. That's also okay. I, I'm so excited to have closure with this. So like next week I can do the rest of the stuff I've been wanting to do, and I'm just I'm so excited to have this behind me. Or if it's a test or whatever. So it's just so important. Mel Robbins also does this thing. She calls the five four three two one, which I use sometimes just to launch myself out of bed. And I'm pretty excited to get up in the morning, but it is fun. So sometimes I'll, I'll do that, especially when it's cold, because we're in Northern Vermont, we heat with wood. So sometimes, you know, early in the morning, it's a little chilly. 
So that's usually when it works the best. And I'll do, okay, go. Five, four, three, two, one, launch. I even say the word launch. Swing around. My feet hit the ground. That's why I do my thank you and my thank you. Spine intact, feet intact, hands, arms, eyes intact, everything. Just thank you. But the five, four, three, two, one launch works like a charm. I have to give her that. It really does. She also uses it with this fear versus excitement thing. So she did one thing when she was actually getting ready to go on stage for something to do a talk and it's like 7,000 people out there. I, I don't know, but uh, she was doing her thing and she took the time, which I certainly appreciated to do an in the moment kind of thing versus talking about it before or after the fact, she was right about to go on stage and she said, here I go, five, four, three, two, one. And then, uh, and, and then with the only thing I would add to that is some deep breathing. If it would be me, it'd be five, four, three, two, one blast off i would do the deep breathing thing but either way it works really really well the breathing obviously brings us into the present moment which takes us out of the fear of the future and out of whatever happened in the past and there are, you know other circumstances that didn't go well whatever so the breathing is a neurological reset an immediate neurological reset so i would just add that part and then mel also talked about um something that can help which she refers to as an anchor thought and uh, you know, I've just, I've, I've referred to these in various episodes about um, allowing that, that good feeling and kind of priming the mind. That's what, I, that's what I call it. But it's the same. Her word is just different than mine. Priming the mind. We can prime the mind and we can prime our whole day by priming the mind. So she talks about if you're getting ready to do a presentation, again, fill in the blank with whatever it is that you are, uh, were feeling fearful about and are now about to feel excited about. And she talks about having an anchor thought, which means something pleasant. Pick a, a good memory uh, and that involves a good feeling, a really good feeling. Let's say after the presentation on, on Thursday, maybe you're headed out for a long weekend and, and think about um, when you've gotten away in the past and picture your people, maybe it was with a partner or a partner and your kids and you know something that you have to look forward to later and feel the good feeling of what that has been like for you in the past then let the goodness in because it really helps to to get the brain in a good place i'm just a big fan of and the anchor thought i like the words of <clears throat> because that's just really that's about priming it's about setting you know shifting out of that fear-based thinking with, with with the words like we just said and and then pulling our mind out of it with a with a pleasant pleasant thought the other thing is with that counting thing that mel did the five four three two one in general when we when we uh, um <clears throat> excuse me you know sort of uh bring in some conscious thinking just like when anyone's nervous about anything it it then it then sort of um stirs up the prefrontal cortex because if the fear is all in the limbic system which is in the middle of the brain and the prefrontal cortex is the rational part of the brain so the limbic system is just the knee jerky fear-based you know reactive part of the part of us it also keeps us alive so you don't want to throw it out for sure um but the prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain right here like right behind the forehead that says you know what let's just breathe for a second you've done presentations before they've generally gone really well people are also here because they're excited to see you da 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 da, -da calm 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 okay well when we're in limbic mode the prefrontal cortex is like in a hammock between two trees, sipping a margarita, or maybe we shouldn't say that, sipping a lemonade, and, and just not, you know, the limbic system's doing its own thing. Kind of like when you leave, a, you know, teenagers at home for the weekend, which hopefully you don't do, well, you know, then they're just like, woohoo. So, so in order, so when the prefrontal cor cortex is offline, which it is when we're, when we're often, when we're full of limbic system, fear-based thinking, when we enter conscious thought into the, into the mix, it pulls us into a little bit more rational place so that's also important with this whole thing so for, um also uh speaking of going out for pre doing a presentation or whatever it is you're you're we're fear-based now excited about is i've done this with with um with one of my kids when she just gets in that mode and the counting thing is great the one suggestion i would say if it's when you're about to do whatever is to start counting backwards from let's say like 500 by by sevens or nines because that'll really, uh, that'll really awaken the prefrontal cortex. It's like, okay, all hands on deck. We got to count now, you know, come down to my nines and sevens. And the brain obviously is really good at patterns and picks it up quickly. So you may have to shift that and start back from 847 and count back by threes. But that is a very, very fast reset 
if for like right before whatever you're that whatever you're about to do okay so that's it fear versus excited remember it's it is the same exact feeling in the body it just matters how you label it in the mind prime your mind with a good memory and if you need to stir up your prefrontal cortex the rational part of you that knows it's all going to be okay with some conscious thoughts such as counting backwards from a large number by sevens or threes or nines something that's not so easy like twos okay that's it this is kimberly quinn signing off from the beautiful rainy northern vermont with little g and his mindfulness goat vest all right have a mindful day